Well, here we are again in the virtual world. I just wanted to give you uh, the answers to these practice problems so you're set for your quiz. So first up, we've got um, identifying acids and bases and the conjugate acid-base pairs, according to Bronsted-Lowry. So in our first reaction here, the acids, of course, on both sides of the equation, donate the hydrogen. So you can see I've got H2CO3 here, HCO3 over there. So that's doing my donating there's my acid because I see I have CN here and HCN over there it accepted that hydrogen so that is the base on the flip side to go back I have my HCN giving the hydrogen back so to speak there's my acid there's my base and then the conjugate acid base pairs they have to be on opposite sides of the equilibrium and they differ by a proton. So my H2CO3 and my HCO3 negative is one pair, as is my CN minus cyanide and my hydrogen cyanide. So those are my acid base pairs for that reaction. Next up, we see write the balanced equation between hydrofluoric acid and the hydroxide ion. So I've got hydrofluoric acid, which of course is aqueous, and the hydroxide ion, again aqueous. And we're going to form the fluoride ion and water. So my fluoride ion is aqueous, and water, of course, is liquid. And then hopefully you recognize, obviously, hydrofluoric acid hydroxide acting as the base. On the other side, water is the acid donating a hydrogen to the fluoride ion. And so my pairs, I have HF and F, and I also have hydroxide and water. And so when you're looking at a whether or not something is an acid-base pair, it's just going to be differing by a hydrogen. So the acid HPO4 minus 2, the conjugate base, would now not have the hydrogen there anymore. On the flip side, down here I have H2PO4 negative as the base. The acid will have one more hydrogen. So you can pause the video and I'll put up the rest of these answers and you can check how you did. So again, if you're given the acid, the conjugate base has one less hydrogen. If you're given the base, the conjugate acid has one more hydrogen. Hope you did good there. Next up, you're going to be figuring out the favored direction of these acid-base reactions based on their relative strengths. And there's that list in your book, Table 15.2. I put a little mini chart right here. But essentially, you just look, and we know that generally speaking, that an acid-base reaction will go towards in the direction of the weaker acids or bases. So I just kind of look. I've got H2S and acetic acid here. And when I look on my chart, I see that there's acetic acid, there's H2S. Um, H2S is weaker, so I know that this first reaction is going to be favored in the reactants direction because this is weaker. All right, and you can do that uh, for anything. You can do it for the bases as well. For the next one, NH4, I see that right here, and also H3PO4, I see that up here. Again, going to the reactants because NH4 is weaker than the H3PO4. The last one, cyanide is kind of not on this list, but it's below NH4, sorry, HCN, hydrogen cyanide. So when I compare that to H2S, H2S is already circled up there. So this time we're going to be going towards the products as the HCN is weaker than the H2S. And so for that next question, First, complete the acid-base reaction. 
So I've got HSO4 and CLO. Obviously, the HSO4 is going to donate its hydrogen. There's the only hydrogen there, so there's only one choice. So we'll make HCL. O. Both of these are aqueous. And so determine the favorite direction. All right, so I have to look on my little chart again. HSO4 isn't there. I'm sorry, HClO isn't there. So HClO is there. HSO4 is up here. HClO is weaker. And so this is going to be going to the products favored there because HClO is weaker than the HSO4. All right, so obviously you have to be given that chart. I don't expect you to have that memorized, but you can make a general statement like if I show you a reaction and I tell you which way it's favored, you can figure out which acid or base is stronger or weaker based on the direction that the reaction is favored. Because again, our acid bases, our acid base reactions are always going to go in the direction of the weaker acid or base. Okay, so ordering these from strongest to weakest based on the formulas alone, we have some of those trend data that were talked about. But the first one there, HCl and H2S. You better recognize that HCl is one of our six strong acids. So that's, you know, HCl is completely strong. It's dissociating completely. And so that's got to be stronger than H2S, which is not one of our six strong acids. Technically, you could say yes, that chlorine is more electronegative than the sulfur, and that's partially why. So that tends to be our dominant trend as we move across the period on the periodic table. And so obviously the HCl bond is more polar. That hydrogen is easier to remove. That's why it's the stronger acid. So that's kind of the explanation I'm looking for. You can pause the video, try and figure those out, and then check back with the answers. So for B and C, we have the same situation. We have polyprotic acids and their anions. So the less negative the charge, the stronger the acid is. For letter D, H2SE is stronger than H2S, stronger than H2O. Because as you, S, E, S, and O are in the same group. As you go down, the atoms get larger. The H is easier to remove from the SC, which is largest, and so that makes it the strongest acid. HBRO4 is greater than HBRO2 is greater than HBRO. These are oxo acids, and in this situation, the strength increases with the more oxygens present. And lastly, this was in our notes, HF, hydrofluoric acid, is stronger than water. Obviously, fluorine, our most electronegative element, more electronegative than oxygen. So we've got the more polar bond. It's easier to ionize, get that hydrogen out of there. All right, so solutions of strong acids or bases. What are our concentrations? Well, these are pretty easy when you're looking at, here I've got 1.2 molar HBr. Hydrobromic acid is one of our strong ones. So if that's the concentration of the solution, the concentration of my hydronium is 1.2 molar. In order to find my hydroxide, I have to remember the great and powerful ion product constant of water is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14. And that is hydronium times hydroxide. So when I take 1 times 10 to the negative 14 and divide by my known, my 1.2, my hydroxide is 8.3 times 10 to the negative 15. Not very much there at all, but indeed, we see that uh, we have some there present because of the self-ionization of water. Bases are the same thing. If I have a strong base, then the molarity of that solution is the molarity of that base. But be careful of when we have two hydroxides or two hydrogens in the formula. So try and figure those out and then check your answers. So for letter B, strong base, so my concentration of hydroxide is 0.32 molar, and then when I divide my ion product constant by that, I get hydronium 3.1 times 10 to the negative 14. And again, C and D, calcium hydroxide, strong base, but I have to multiply the solution concentration by 2 because of the two hydroxides. That's how I got that answer. 
and letter D again, sulfuric acid, two hydrogens, so I have to multiply my molarity by two, because that'll give me the concentration of my hydronium, and then again we find the other ion the same way. These questions are looking at the exact same thing, so two and three, just figure that out the exact same way. I'll post the answers in a second. Down here, shampoo with a hydroxide, 8.4 times 10 to the negative 5. Remember, the middle point is 10 to the negative 7. That's neutral. If hydroxide's greater than that concentration, we have a base. So 10 to the negative 5 is greater than 10 to the negative 7, so that shampoo is basic. And the antiseptic solution has a hydroxide concentration of 1.5 times 7 of 9. That's less, so the antiseptic is acidic. And you're like, wait, Mr. Sen, this doesn't make sense. I know, I just realized that I had already switched this for next year. So on yours, it says the antiseptic here. And it says the shampoo here. But it's the same concept. Whichever, when your concentration is greater than 10 to the negative 7 for hydroxide, it's basic. And when it's less, it's acidic. Sorry about that. Got ahead of myself. Pause and figure out 2 and 3 and check your answers. So question 2, hydrochloric acid. Concentration is 0.5, so that's what the concentration of hydronium is. Ion product constant divided by that. That's how I get my hydroxide 2 times 10 to the negative 14 molar. Number three, magnesium hydroxide, two hydroxides, so I have to multiply by two. That's where I get that concentration, and then find the hydronium using the ion product constant. So now it's time with fun with pH. So when our pH is less than seven, that's an acidic situation. When our pH is greater than seven, that's basic. When my pH is set seven, that's neutral. Even if my pH is slightly above or below, only 7.0 is actually neutral. And then, of course, pH plus pOH always equals 14. So if I'm given my pOH, then it's just a matter of subtracting from 14 to find that. So my pH is 8.7. Basic. And here my pH is 2.3 acidic. To find pH, you simply take the negative log of the hydronium concentration. And so somehow you got to find the hydronium concentration. Or if you're given pOH, again, subtract from 14. So first up, if I take the negative log of 10 to the negative 8, my pH is just 8. When I take the negative log of 6.35, times 10 to the negative 4, I get 3.20. Again, if I'm given pOH, I just subtract from 14. So my pH is 3.57 here. It's 10.21 here. If I'm given hydroxide, if I take the negative log of hydroxide, I get pOH. And so it's just a matter of finding pOH and then subtracting from 14. So the negative log of 10 to the negative 9, that means my pOH is 9, so my pH is 5. Here, if I take the negative log of that hydroxide, my pOH is 3.14, so my pH is 10.86. If I want to know my hydronium concentration, then I simply use the reverse log. The hydronium concentration is 10 to the negative pH. So if my pH is 10, my concentration is 10 to the negative 10 molar. If my pH is 2.5, it's 10 to the negative 2.5, but I don't leave it like that. I put that in my calculator to get 3.2 times 10 to the negative 3 molar. If I have pOH, then 10 to the negative pOH will give me my hydroxide. Oh, I'm sorry, easier than that. Subtract from 14 first. 14 minus 12.75 is 1.25. So 10 to the negative 1.25, I get 0 0.05623 molar. Pause, try the other ones, I'll show you the answers real quick. There are the answers for C, D, and E, and how to do them. 
I'm going to have to start another video for the last couple questions.